Welcome to Yard Work, where we dig into the prison industrial complex. This show is brought to you by the Worthy Now Network and powered by the Church of the Larger Fellowship. My name is Mandy Goheen, and I am the Director of Prison Ministry at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, as well as the Worthy Now Network. And I'm joined today by my co-host. Hi, I'm Rodney Limery, and I'm a new learning fellow at the CLF and part of the Worthy Now Network. And what are we going to do today, Rodney? Well, today, Mandy, we've got a bunch of questions that I think would be really interesting for all of us to know more about the new Faithify campaign that was recently released for uh, support of the Worthy Now Network and our incarcerated folk that we serve. Cool. So if any of you don't know what Faithify is, it's a, it's a UU crowdfunding um, source and right now the CLF is doing a fundraising through Faithify for $10,000 is it's actually being matched by Veach of Shelter Rock and um, Unity Unitarian Church so anyway do you have any questions for me about the Faithify Rodney yeah. Yeah, so as you obviously know, I'm new and I'm curious if you could tell us a little bit more about the Worthy Now Network, Ministry Network, and how it actually relates to the Church of the Larger Fellowship. Okay, that's a great question and it's a little confusing for folks. So the Church of the Larger Fellowship powers the Worthy Now Network, which means that we are an umbrella, the CLF is like an umbrella and the prison ministry is one of the ministries of the CLF. And then the prison ministry is connected to the Worthy Now Network, which is a support system for people who are trying to dig into mass incarceration like both of us and um, get information out to both religious liberals of other faiths and UUs about how they can do prison ministry in their own congregations in partnership with the CLF or on their own with a support network from the CLF. Oh, that's, that's great. And I know you just gave us a little bit of an overview of Faithify, but could you maybe tell us exactly what a, a pledge of $150 covers in terms of the programming costs? Like what, what do the incarcerated folk get for that? Well, that's a, another really great question. Um, so one of the things that's most important is the $150 pays for their programming fees for them to be members of the Church of the Larger Fellowship. So they're actually voting members. They voted for ordination for a couple times and, and they're actual members of our congregation, even though they're living behind prison walls. And how we interact with them, of course, is not digitally like we do, we're doing right now and how most of the CLF focuses. And so we actually send them things in the mail and they get a lot of mail from us, thank goodness. Um, because they're members of the church, they get UU World just like you and I do when we're members of a home congregation. They get Quest for Meaning every month from us, a paper copy. Um, they're eligible when they join the CLF to take a new UU class. And if they take that new UU class, they can become um, part of our letter writing ministry and get matched with a pen pal, generally a UU in the free world, who has something in common with them. Um, they also get two newsletters a year from us. And in those newsletters, they have options for signing up for both classes from Tapestry of Faith and reading packets. And the reading packets are the way we communicate and we um, get them reading materials. Yeah, thanks. And, you know, in terms of the reading packets, I heard through the grapevine that the Worthy Now Ministry Program actually created a special relationship with two major publishers of Unitarian Universalist literature. I think it's the Beacon Press and Skinner House Books. Yes. Can you tell us more about that particular relationship and what do you mean by reading packets? One of our greatest partnerships is with Skinner House and Beacon Press and what they do to help us with reading packets is amazing and the reason they help us with this is because there are so many rules in different 
prisons about how to get reading materials to people that it can get really inhibitive to get them books and get them stuff like they can't have hardback books they can only receive books from a publisher blah 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 so what beacon press and skinner house does is they share with us a, the pdf of the book and we turn it into chapter long letters that the folks who are incarcerated receive and eventually, after so many months, they receive a whole book. Reverend Meg Riley, our um, senior minister, just published the, work, the book Testimony. And through Skinner House, we were able to offer testimony to all of our members who are living in mass incarceration. So it was really cool. Wow, that's amazing. <clears throat> yeah, when I first uh, heard about the CLF years ago, and specifically the prison program that you did, I really only knew about the pen pal program. And I think that's an amazing uh, aspect of prison ministry that the CLF uh, facilitates. Can you tell us more about that program and maybe even how people who are interested could get involved? Yes, we need pen pals. I'll just say that right now. And um, how you do that is you go to the Worthy Nile website, which is, and you go to the pen pal tab and you sign up online and then I would match you with someone who's incarcerated either and you have two choices it can be somebody who lives nearby you because you maybe want to eventually visit them or somebody who lives very far away because you're not comfortable with living near someone who's incarcerated and so how it works is you write directly to the person who is in prison and use the CLF as your return address. So they don't have your home address at all. And then they send all their letters to the CLF where we forward them to you so that they never have your direct mailing address. And as a matter of fact, really don't have access to your last name unless you wish to share that. And we have over 300, nearly 400 letter writing matches right now. And, and we desperately, desperately need pen pals. We were supposed to match um, pen pals in September, and I only have like 10 applications. So, you know, if you could come and fill out an application, if you're even just toying with the idea, it's fine. It's a six month obligation to write them. And after that, if it's not working out, it's not working out and that's fine. So that's one of the other really great parts of our ministry and a way to connect people together and build relationships. Yeah, it sounds like an incredible way to kind of practically live out our UU values. Um, in that venue, I, I understand that it seems, at least to me, that listening to our incarcerated uh, siblings is really an important aspect of the Worthy Now Network and its mis mission and ministry. I know that something special happened this year at General Assembly. I was there. Um, it was at uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the action of immediate witness that was approved there. Sure. The action of immediate witness process goes through every year. And at General Assembly, the delegates pick the top three um, items that are most important to them that they think they need immediate action. These are issues that we don't have three years to sit around and study. These are things that need to happen now. These are, this is also one of the inspirations for doing this, this vlog for you all is in response to the action of immediate witness, which is to um, dismantle medical costs, predatory medical costs for people in prison. And what we found when we asked our members what their number one justice issue was living in prison, we found that medical costs were really the biggest problem. And why that's such a big problem is they're charged for medical care and they oftentimes make only cent, you know, 16, 25 cents an hour. And families are pressured to pay for that cost because it gets put on their commissary account. So they're not able to buy any like everyday living supplies unless their medical bills are paid off. 
So when we went to General Assembly, we told the assembly the story and happily, we were one of the top three that were voted in as, um, as something that you use need to take a look at, which is, is the charging people in prison for medical care and in ICE and in jails and in all kinds of uh, juvenile detention, form, all forms of mass incarceration. And there's a business called Cormark that actually is who a private business that brings the medical care to the prisons and is making a profit from people's pain and suffering. Because if you have to decide between toothpaste or going to the doctor, it's gonna be a hard decision. We got to talk to lots and lots of people about what was going on and everybody was very surprised. Yeah, it was really nice to see the sea of support that came to really the aid of, of incarcerated folk and also you know, just the, the feeling of wanting to end these kind of predatory practices within our, our prison systems. So Mandy, I once had a professor who concluded all of her lectures by saying, many people would listen to you talk, but only hear you if you tell them what's what and who cares. And so in that context, out of everything that you've shared with us today, can you kind of tell us the so what and who cares with all of this? Why is it that we as you use should care so much about prison ministry and the outreach that CLF is doing? Well, there's the, there's the easy answer, which is that everybody is worthy now of love and justice, right? So that's, I can go straight to the first principle and say, here we go. For me, my theology and the research actually go together, which is that by building relationships, and for me, relationships are where the divine reside. When we build relationships together and we build people up and they know that someone on the outside cares about them, we can help in a very abstract way reduce recidivism because one of the main findings is that having a family on the outside that cares about you is the number one thing that can keep you from going back to prison. Amen. Well, we may not be a family, exactly, but we are a church family for them. And we're working really hard on trying to figure out what next steps are and how we can support post-incarcerated folks and how we can create community for them as well. And that's part of the adventure of this year. And honestly, another thing that this Faithify campaign can really help with is funding those relationships. Like we can do Skinner House books and Beacon Press books all day, but we need money for paper and we need money for stamps. We, you know, we forward all these letters to maintain those relationships. And I will tell you that one of our pen pal relationships is my favorite that's my favorite is that when the person walked out of the prison gate their brother and their pen pal were standing there waiting for them oh, wow. now even if one person even if that's all we do we have succeeded in our prison ministry right even if we just get a letter that says you heard me you cared about me i heard my name at mail call you know, it, it just really makes a huge difference in people's lives. Mm. So that's my spiel about why I think the prison ministry works. I also think that we need to support each other as professionals who are doing prison ministry and justice work. And we need to work on building our community as well so that we can help undergird those folks who are coming out of prison. And by taking good care of ourselves, we can take good care of others maybe even strengthen our own ability to forgive and have a little grace. But maybe that's a different video. That's a different video. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us. And just remember to, if you've been thinking about becoming a pen pal, today's the day and visit our Faithify fundraiser. We would love your support and any amount counts. Even $5 becomes $10 in this campaign. So we really need your help and we're really looking forward to what we can do next once we finish this fundraising adventure. 
Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.